Hello and welcome to Secrets Mystery Manor. I'm your host, Psychic Zelda Kelly. Warning, this podcast may contain sensitive material. It is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer and listening discretion is advised. Hello and welcome, welcome. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here because this story really, really gave me the creeps. And that's why I know that you're going to really enjoy it. So you know the drill. You know by now it's time to get the teddy bear and the blanket. That's right. Cozy in, snuggle up, get your popcorn and your snacks. That's right. Got to have some munchies. And get your drinks, your whatever it is that makes you feel good. But snuggle in and leave the lights on. Because this one you'll think about for days to come. You might even want to listen to it again. But yeah, it gave me the creeps. So here we go. There was a young man by the name of Dennis. He was married to... A beautiful young woman, just beautiful, stunning look, looking, gorgeous, blonde, blue eyes. She looked like a model. And this young woman was everything to Dennis. Her name was her her name was Cheryl. Cheryl was a model. She basically was the apple of Dennis' eye. The family loved her. She was sweet and gorgeous and was so giving and so loving. Well, Dennis really started to be getting a little worried about her. And I think that she gave him a good reason to be. Because there were some times that she was doing things she couldn't explain. Like, maybe taking a phone call that she tried to hide, or she would erase her text, and she would come home a little later from work, and Dennis would always ask, and she would say, oh no, you know, everything is fine, I just stopped off, I wanted to see a friend, or I stopped at this light, or I stopped at the park to walk, or whatever the case may be. So, Dennis was going to work one day, and he had an accident. And unfortunately, the accident left him crippled. And he lost his left hand, uh, right, right just above the left wrist. He was devastated, and so was Cheryl. Cheryl was a good wife, and she took care of him. She did everything that she was supposed to do. She was a wonderful person to him. But as time went on, and he needed more help, because he was crippled, he couldn't get around that well, couldn't hardly walk, and he was going to be this way for the rest of his life. And after all, he lost his left hand. He was right-handed, but... Still, you have a hard time functioning when you lose a you lose a limb or you lose your hand or you know you your it causes you to be off balance. As time went on, Dennis was left alone more and more as Cheryl went out, and there was just literally nothing that Dennis could do. Now this was in a sleepy little town. This was in a sleepy little town in the state of Alabama. I'm not going to mention the town because I think some family members have been harassed over it. Um, A lot of people had to move. It affected a lot of people. So there you go. All right. So back to the story. So Dennis and Cheryl's marriage started to fall apart. He actually suggested to Cheryl that he would like to try to have a child. After all, this would be their 
only chance to have a child, and he wanted to have a child, and she said no. Didn't want to have a child. Didn't feel that it was the right time. So the arguments ensued. So as time went on, Dennis' health situation became worse. He couldn't hardly get around. He needed to help in order to even function around the home, even using a walker or crutches or anything else like that was just really at this point not good enough. He couldn't get around. He ultimately ended up in a wheelchair. And of course, their home wasn't made for a wheelchair, so it made it even tougher for him to visit the bathroom or him to go to the kitchen. And as time went on, well, the wife Cheryl went to see other places, other people, she made an effort to stay away. As time went on, she resented him. And even when she was home, she wouldn't look after him. Even if he wanted a glass of water, something to eat, she would put it out on the kitchen table and wouldn't take it to him in their bedroom. Now it started getting even worse. So as time went on, in order to help Dennis function, he had a prosthetic hand fitted to him. And it, it looked almost real, but he would wear a glove over it because it would just kind of, it freaked Cheryl out and he didn't want to make her uncomfortable or give her any more excuse to leave her alone. So he wore a glove over it. And it strapped on his arm, right above where his wrist would be. Now, he really couldn't move it. It was just a prosthesis, uh, I can't talk. <laughs> it was a prosthesis just so there was a balance for him and for Cheryl. So as time went on, he would lay in bed in their room and the sun would go down, and the sun would come through their room, and he couldn't get up to turn the light on. So there would be the light shining through their bedroom window, and as time went on, he would watch the light from the sun move away and into darkness. And he would lay there hours night after night, wondering where Cheryl was, wondering where she was going to be or if she would even call or anything. She was making it hard for Dennis, and his family was far in another state, I believe in California. So this was something, they, it was just not easy for anyone to come and help or do anything or be there to assist. Now, as time went on, Cheryl really didn't care if she talked on the phone in front of him. And it was obvious that she was talking to another man. And this other man would make it very obvious that he was speaking to her in a very, well, way that was inappropriate for a married woman. Dennis overheard this. Now, his name was Charles, the guy on the phone. Now, Charles would start calling Cheryl often, and Dennis could hear her talking in the other room and the giggles and the laughs and all this. And Dennis stopped feeling sorry for himself, and he started feeling enraged, and he would yell to her, get off the phone, you're my wife. And Cheryl would tell him, you just go mind your own business, just lay there, just lay there and die. Who cares? There's nobody coming for you. There's nobody cares about you. And that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for you to die. Now, I'll tell you, that's some brave words. Could you say that to someone? I don't know. 
I don't know if that's a good idea to do that, right? Even in rage. You don't tell anybody to go to the hot place, and you don't tell anybody you want them to die. It's just not right. But she didn't feel that way. She was really telling him where to go, and that she wanted him to enjoy the trip. As time went on, this went on for night after night, and then day after day. And Charles got really brave. He would start coming to the house and would start picking Cheryl up for them to go out. And Charles would come in, and you could see right from the bedroom door where Dennis was that you could see where Charles was coming in, and he would embrace Cheryl. And they would kiss and hug and make out. Might as well just say it. They would make out in front of Dennis, and Dennis was livid. His health was getting worse. So this last time that Charles went out to pick up, uh, the last time that he came over to pick up Cheryl, when they left the house, Dennis watched as the sun came through the window and moved into darkness. And as it was very dark, and he was laying there. He was looking at the ceiling, and he said, if it's the last thing I do, I will make sure that Charles never takes my wife from me. Only I have that power to do that. Now, he was enraged, and he was laying there and crippled and hurting, And Cheryl really was making a spectacle of herself with this guy, Charles. This was not good. People knew what was going on, the whispers in the town. They were no longer attending the church, so there were a lot of speculation. And everybody knew who Charles was, and he had a really, really bad reputation. And as time went on, it really got more and more intense. A few days later, Dennis woke up and noticed that the hand was no longer strapped on his arm. And he thought, well, that's just really odd. I mean, I don't don't remember taking that off. I should have at night, but I don't remember taking that off. Maybe I did in my sleep. I don't remember. That's okay. But as time went on, uh, uh, Dennis put the hand back on his arm, on his left arm. And then all of a sudden, there was a knock on the door. Cheryl was obviously waiting for Charles to come over, but this time, it wasn't Charles. It was the police. They came to actually find out what had happened to Charles. They said that Charles had been missing since the night before, and other people in town saw that Cheryl was with him and wanted to know what happened. Well, obviously Cheryl didn't know. Said that he he dropped her off at her house about 1 o'clock in the morning, and that was it. That was the last that she saw of him. Well, the police were... It was a small town, and they knew what was going on, and they actually felt sorry for Dennis, and the one officer went in and talked to Dennis, and it was obviously it wasn't Dennis because, I mean, after all, there he is laying in bed, he's crippled, and he's he's disabled, and he's injured, and it's obvious there was no way it could have been him, but he felt sorry. The police officer felt sorry for him, and he went in and spoke to him and told him what was going on, told Dennis that Charles was missing, and Dennis said, good. Well, the police officer understood because they liked Dennis. Dennis was a pillar in the community. He would help anyone, anywhere, with anything. So at this point, Cheryl was frantic. She was doing everything and anything to call Charles, leaving messages on his phone, 
wondering where he was. She was up all night, and this went on for days and days now. So, one night, as Dennis watched the sun coming into the bedroom window and then descending into darkness, Cheryl came into the bedroom and told Dennis just how much she hated him and that she would do anything to be with Charles. She hated Dennis, didn't want to be with him any longer, didn't love him anymore, and her love was for Charles. Well, Dennis didn't say anything because this behavior was shocking to him. She was really intense about the whole thing and clearly upset. And she left the room. Still, Dennis was not receiving any help from her. It was all he could do to barely get up and take care of his daily needs, get anything to eat, get anything to drink. And as time went on, he was unable to take care of himself physically. So Cheryl would come in nightly, every night, and tell how she hated Dennis. And the sun would go down and darkness would descend. And that would be it. And it would be a horrible, horrible time for Dennis because he knew this was something that was going to happen now on a daily basis and he just didn't know how long it was going to be. At night after she would leave the room he would lay look up at the ceiling and say I would give anything to have peace and I hate to think but I would give anything to get her out of here. I would give anything to just have Charles show up again and have Cheryl just get out of my hair and get out of my life. I know that I would feel so much better if that happened. And as time went on, the abuse became more and more intense from Cheryl. She would actually take the coffee pot, or she would take the rolling pin from the kitchen, or anything that she could get her hand on, a pot, a pan, a baking sheet, anything and everything, and go in and start hitting Dennis. Well, he could not defend himself. And so every day now, as the sun went down and descended into darkness, this happened over and over again. And poor Dennis would lay there, unable to really fend off all of this anger and have to take it. He would take the beating from Cheryl. And every night he would look at the ceiling and he would say, I would give anything. I want her to be gone. I want Charles to show up. I want this to happen. I want him to come back and take her away from me. Anybody, anybody, take her away. Well, it wasn't maybe just a few days later that the phone started to ring for Cheryl. Cheryl seemed happy, and she was having conversations. And it was very obvious that they were inappropriate conversations. So Dennis thought, well, gee, there's, there's Charles. He came back. That's a great thing. Should get out of my hair. So day after day and night after night, this started happening. And the beating stopped. Cheryl no longer went into Dennis' room. So as the sun came through the window and descended into darkness into the bedroom, Cheryl started going out. And it was a relief because there were peace. And the quiet was so wonderful and peaceful. 
And about one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, Cheryl would come back in and she would be drinking and she would come in and say what a wonderful time that she would have. And poor Dennis sat there and listened to this. Obviously, it was not Charles. This was a new one. This was a new guy. So Cheryl would then come in and tell Dennis how much she hated him and how she wished he would die so she would be free and so she could get on with the rest of her life. So this started over and over again. And each time that she would do it and find another one, the police would show up at the house and question Cheryl as to where they were. What happened to these men? And after the third time, she really became a suspect because it was just unexplainable how these men would be coming over, meeting her, taking her out, and then after a few weeks, disappear. And it would happen all over again. More and more, Dennis would wake up in the middle of the night and he would realize that the hand was not attached to him. And so as time went on, he made an effort to make sure that the hand was strapped on very well at night. It made him feel secure and it made him feel whole and it made him feel like a man again. And he would sleep on his side so that he could hold that hand in place. Lo and behold, he would wake up then in the morning and the hand would be either laying on the side table beside him or it would be on his bed. The only conclusion that he had was that Cheryl would come in during the middle of the night and very easy, sneaky way that Cheryl now turned into this beast take his hand off just to make sure that it got to him, just as a way to really, really mess with his mind. He thought he was going crazy. So this last night, Cheryl got really, really upset, and the beating started all over again. A rolling pin was this time, and poor Dennis laid there and take, took it. He had a black eye. His nose was broken, he had bruises, and it was, it was quite horrific what she did to him. He had lacerations on his head, it was, it was horrible. And there was no way that he could make a phone call, there was no phone in his room, and he did no longer had a cell phone. So he laid there, he couldn't call the police, he couldn't call a hospital, he couldn't call anything. And as the sun came through the bedroom window and descended into darkness. He looked up at the ceiling and said, I would give anything. I wish that I could do something about this and get rid of her. She now has made my life so miserable. And if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be laying here like this. I hope and I pray something will happen to her because I'm the one who wants to be free. And with that being said, we're going to take a very, very quick break to listen to our sponsor, Psychic Secrets. We'll be back in just one minute. Stay tuned. Hi, everyone. This is your friend Zelda Kelly, and I would like to take a minute to invite you to stop over to Psychic Secrets. That's www.psychicsecrets.com. There, you can find an advisor that can help you with advice, direction, and guidance that you need. And also, you can read our blog, which has a lot of really, really good little articles and information and can actually answer some questions for you. You can find us here on this same site, this Secrets Mystery Manor. We are there. Huh, so you're there already if you found us. 
But we also have another section, which is the secrets, laws of attraction. We have some wonderful videos up, and we would love to have you stop by and take a look at that. Now, I want you to know that secrets really is here for helping the person. We have qualified, experienced advisors on call 24-7. We have the ability to chat. We have the ability to take a call and actually even a video call if you feel so inclined. So stop on by to PsychicSecrets.com. That's www.PsychicSecrets. That's two S's in the middle now. PsychicSecrets.com. And take advantage of our first-time offer. For those of you who have never called before, first-time customer, we have an offering of 30 minutes for $30. You know, we can get a lot accomplished in 30 minutes. I'm so glad that you stopped by today to listen to Secrets Mystery Manor. And I hope you take the invitation to come on over and check out our advisors. We're here for you. So thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you soon and you'll see me on there. I'm Extension 11. So back to our podcast. Bye for now. Okay, thank you, thank you so much for your time and and letting Psychic Secrets tell us all about how wonderful they are and how much they can help with guidance and direction. Thank you, Psychic Secrets. Now back to the story. So this was a horrible night. Dennis laid there all night in the darkness, but it was peaceful. It, It was really, really... He, he didn't know if he liked it, or he didn't know if it were painful. There was a part of him that was confused, and a part of him that just thought, you know, I'm just going to go to sleep. So he strapped his hand on. He laid on his side so his hand would be under him. He was in pain. It was horrible. And that was it. Now, usually Cheryl would come home at about 1, no later than 1.30 a.m. in the morning, but this time she didn't come home. And it was 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Well, Dennis noticed this, but he thought, oh, that's more peace for me. I'm going to sleep while I can, or while I can. He fell back to sleep, and he woke up at about 8 o'clock. And he woke up to banging on the door. Well, he couldn't get to the door, but he could see that it was the police at the, at the door. Well, he did all he could to motion them in. And they came in and they looked around and the one said, Dennis, how are you doing, buddy? Dennis said, well, under the circumstances, I'm okay. And they noticed that Dennis had been pretty beat up. He had a nose that had bled and black under his eyes. And it was, he, he really, really, really looked bad. And he needed immediate medical attention. So the police didn't say while they were there. They called an ambulance and they got him in the hospital. So the ambulance came and they took him to the hospital And during all this, Dennis looked down and he realized he did not have his hand. And when the police came to the hospital to see how he was and to tell him why they were there, they said, hey, did you guys see my hand? And they both looked at each other and they didn't know what to say and they said, "Uh, yeah, we did, buddy. It was laying on the bed. And Dennis said, well, is there any way that you can bring it to me? And they looked at each other and they said, well, I don't think so. Not now. And so at this point, Dennis was laying there, bandaged up, didn't know what to say, didn't know what to do. And things were getting pretty odd. Well, the police finally 
after some time of sitting there waiting, shared with Dennis that Cheryl was found. And she was found dead. Well, Dennis was shocked. And at that point, he didn't really even know if he should laugh or cry. Because there was a part of him that wanted to jump for joy, and there was a part of him that wanted to just turn over and cry. Because out of all of this, he still loved her. He still carried the memory of how they were when they first got together. Finally, he got up enough courage to say, how did they die? Or how did she die? He said, before we tell you that, we found her with Charles. And we found her with this other man, and then this other man, and then another man. And Dennis couldn't understand. He said, what, what do you mean? Charles has been missing for months now. And this other man has been missing for months, if not weeks. And then the other two, they were all together. I don't understand. So the police told him that they had been strangled. And their bodies were dragged to where they piled up on each other. But Cheryl was in the middle of them, and they all these other bodies surrounded her, and they said it was just so odd that it was horrific. And they found them down by this river. And Dennis said, River? You mean this particular river? And he named what it is. And they said, Yes. And he said, Wait. That's the river where I had my accident. Do you remember? Do you remember when I lost control of the car and I went down over the bridge and I had the accident in the river? Yes, we remember. We'll never forget that. And he said, well, that's how I lost my hand. But where is my hand right now? And Dennis tried to get up. This was certainly unsettling, un unsettling to him. The police said, we can't give you the hand, Dennis. And he's like, well, why? 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 What's going on? Well, the bodies and Cheryl were strangled, but it left certain imprints. Like, it, it was a hand that had no motion. And there were fibers from a glove that was left on the hand. And he goes, wait a minute. Are you saying what I think you're saying? And they said, yes. And they said, if we didn't know that you were so medically incapacitated right now, I don't know. We would probably have to arrest you. This went through him like a shot. This was horrific news. They were actually blaming his hand. But then it went through his mind, well, my hand has been missing. How did this happen? He didn't see anything that was obvious with his hand when he would put it back on his arm. But evidently, when his hand would be unstrapped at night and he was sleeping soundly is when all of this happened. So... The doctor had to give Dennis a sedative. And he laid in the hospital room by himself. And he noticed the window and the sun coming through the window. And night started to fall and the sun descended to darkness. All of a sudden, he saw Cheryl in his room. She appeared at the foot of his bed and said, your hand has freed me, and I'm sorry, but I have to go. And I thank you for freeing me, because now I never have to be with you again. Dennis was unable to comprehend this.
In fact, Dennis went under a lot of mental analysis from that moment. And to this day, Dennis is still in a mental institution in which he continues to go over this story over and over again. Now, the only question is, what about the hand? Well, at first, they were able to analyze the hand, and the medical examiner and other authorities were going to look for the hand, or look at the hand, and make an analysis. But it's my understanding from reading this story that when the authorities, the state authorities, came to the evidence room to get it, the box where it had been stored was opened and the hand was gone, never to be seen again. Did Dennis ever recover? I don't know. The families, friends won't speak about it. They all knew Dennis well enough that he didn't do that. But how did that ever happen? That was just such an ex unexplainable event that happened. So the next time you see the sun come through a window and descend into darkness, think of Dennis, won't you? I want to thank you so much for coming to listen with me. Oh, that story gives me the creeps to even tell it. I hope that I accomplished the same with you and creeping you out. <laughs> That's why we're here. So you be well and you be safe. And I can't wait to see you again here at the next episode of Secrets Mystery Manor. And I hope you sleep well tonight. Bye for now. Until next time, thanks so much for listening. I just love this, don't you?